everybody to World of Railways on what is a very exciting day for many model railway hobbyists as Hornby has announced its 2022 range of models. You'll be able to find the full details on our website. Uh, but joining me for a chat about this new range is Hornby's Marketing and Development Director, Simon Kohler. Simon, welcome to uh, 2022 and, uh, and World of Railways. Uh, Crikey, another year already. Um, not sure where 2021 went, but uh, it seems you've been very busy and a uh, very positive outlook for Hornby with much to look forward to. Well, to be honest, I don't know where the last 20 years have gone, not, <laughs> so, not the last 12 months. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 look, every, everybody, everybody, um, doesn't matter what industry you're in, has had a, a pretty tricky year. Um, Certainly started in 2020, and um, it didn't uh, overly improve during 21. Um, but we've, um, you know, we we've sort of carried on with our plans and our development, and you know, again, like everybody, you're having to find your way around um, uh, the challenges. Uh, there's, there's no point in just sort of sort of putting yourself in a corner and rocking backwards and forwards and, and, and humming to yourself. You just got to get on and do it. Uh, we have plans. Um, some of them, obviously, because of COVID, have had to be delayed through to next year, 23, uh, et cetera. But no, we, we're, we're, bashing, we're bashing through. And um, yeah, I think, I'd, I'd like to think anyway, that what, what we're offering for 22 um, is some, um, yeah, it's going to be well combined, uh, the majority of folks. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about what you're offering for, for 2022, because uh, there's there's quite a quite an investment in new tooling. Um, you know, obviously, despite other challenges going on around around the world, like shipping and uh, manufacturing in China and all these things that are you know facing facing manufacturers. Uh, so, new tooling for motive power and rolling stock. Uh, but let's have a recap on some of the main announcements and uh, and talk about how you, in a new range, look to to balance the launches. Because it's one of these things that all modelers are faced with, trying to satisfy the needs and demands of different eras and regions, and, and what modelers strive for in in a, in a new product range. Um, so. Uh, like, I'm interested in your thoughts on the on the thinking behind each one. So, so we've got uh, yeah. headlining. We've got Black Five. Uh, we've got um, Turbo Motive, the LMS Turbo Motive, which are sure to to really garner some interest there. Um, An HST with draw gear and further liveries on that new tooling. To accompany it, we've got the Mark Three Slam Door Coaches. Uh, joining the Hornby Double O range, you've got the the A Four. And, uh, and of course, diesel uh, modelers won't be uh, neglected because they've got the Sentinel 060 diesel hydraulic. Um, class 7553s and 7554s, Mark IV DVT. There's plenty of stuff going on. And that's before we even talk about all the rolling stock and the buildings. And so, so when you're compiling this range, um, you know, what are you looking for to make sure that every box, as much as it can be, is ticked? Well, you have, um, first of all, I know full well that probably about two minutes past uh, eight o'clock on the 10th, uh, we would have received a message where there's nothing in it for me. Uh, and I'm sure, and I'm sure that's right. You, you know, I learned a long while ago, you can't please all the people all the time. Huh. What you have to do, what I've tried to do, and what we try as a team here, is to look where, where there are holes, where we're lacking, uh, and I'm sure there'll be people saying, well, you're lacking in so many areas. But I mean, we, it, it is a question of, of sort of looking where we are. Uh, and re as I say, what, what we're missing, for example, you know, um, it is, it, you, you've got to look at what people would call probably like modern image or mo modern yeah. traction. And you have to look forward. And we have to look at models that we believe will be there for some time so we can offer different liveries. And, you know, it, it, it's at the end of the day, it has to be a good investment. Mm. Uh, and that's really what, what we're looking for. So hence, you know, you, things like the 755, um, which um, is uh, I went to I went over to Stadler, gosh, um, beginning of 2020. Um, 
and uh, with one thing and another with COVID and all the rest of it, did throw a spanner in the work. But you, you've got to look at that because it's 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 a, a, a unit. They're units that uh, at the moment are running in Anglia, but we know <coughs> they'll be running in uh, in Wales as well with subtle changes. So we have to allow for that sort of thing. If 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 they are a success um, from a model perspective, ah. but again, you know you. You have to, it, it's a little bit of a gamble, but you know, it, it's, I think it's a, it's a secure one, but it also illustrates we're moving, we're, we're not just looking at steam locos or whatever, we're, we're looking forward all the time. And I think that's what we have, certainly have to do. I mean, also, I mean the, brand, the brand, sorry to interrupt, Simon, but this, the brand has got a history of, of, of that as well, hasn't it? With, with the likes of Eurostar when that was introduced, and yeah. Class 800s most recently. Yeah. Um, so, so this is something that you're keen to keep on top of, it seems, with, with ranges you know, going forwards to, to, to make sure that the latest multiple units appeal to, to a new generation, I guess, of Hornby Collective. Well, there, there is that. Um, you know, not, not everything's going to be an A3, not everything's going to be an HST. And you, you have to try and cover all bases. Now, now I, I, I do accept that um, the 755s probably don't have the same magic. Uh, as an HST, etc., but they still have a place on a model railway. Certainly, uh -huh. one of um, that boasts sort of you know today's traction. So we we need we do need to to offer that. And I, I don't believe people will be disappointed. I was talking to the designer about it this morning, and uh, yeah, there's some quite clever bits and pieces we've had to put into the, uh, the design of the uh -huh. 755 because it is quite a unique. Um, um, configuration. It, uh, yeah, it sort of it seems to be sharing a, sharing a, some some uh, bogey arrangements in the middle there, where the, the power yeah. is is on board. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the new close coupling mechanisms going to be fitted to some of these models, um, and and what makes these special? Well, I mean, we're always striving to get you know closer and closer. But you 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 you're challenged in many respects by the fact that you know it's what some people call train set curves sure. you know, you, you've got 17 inch radius curves and things like that so you run you do run the gauntlet of, of getting buffer lock etc but when you've got um mark three coaches mark four coaches for example that don't have buffers ah. then the opportunity is is absolutely there for us to get as close as we can and um, without giving obviously too much away, uh, it's not necessarily rocket science, but it's it's a nice coupling that fits into the NEM sockets. It brings it the 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 coaches certainly on the Mark Fours and the Mark Threes very close together, uh, and they look terrific. I mean, you know, you don't have that, that massive gap. So that it's it, it, it's a simple relative solution, but we're always looking. But other other couplings that will give us that little bit more, um, I suppose, realism, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, one day, one day we will develop um, a an effective um, corridor connection. So it looks as if the whole thing is together. But again, you are faced with using train set curves, where you have that big movement uh. and. That that really is a killer. I mean, it's, it's, it, it was a challenge when we're looking at the three nine five, and certainly on the Hitachi, um, where you want to put two together, and you can link two together if you've got wide enough curve. But if you've got these seventeen wow. inch curves or, or less, then you have that big sway. So it is. It is you you have a problem if you go through s s bends or, or whatever of them actually pulling themselves they're too close pulling themselves apart so it, it's um we're looking all the time again for just that authenticity so i've sort of wandered off the subject no, no, it's fine. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge that faces all model manufacturers. And, and I think we've seen great, great strides of progress in all 
uh, all manner of different aspects of, of railway modeling, you know, scenery, detail on models, etc. Yeah. But we still seem to be cursed with the, the dreaded tension lock coupling. Well, <laughs> it's it, effective, it, it, it works, and it's it's the standard. Uh, but but like you say, um, where everything else seems to have improved in terms of appearance, it's still one of those those things that I know manufacturers and yourself included, you, you know, you, you'd like to replace it with something that's that's maybe well, we, not tension lock coupling. Oh, 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 yes, you're right. Over the year, I mean, the, 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 the biggest thing, of course, is the NEM socket, uh, which, is, which is a boom. So, you know, we have for some time used different couplings. We, um, it isn't just the, the hook and bar. Um, so it, the opportunity is there for us to explore and, and to improve. But you will get those who prefer the hook and bar. Mm. Um, me, I just like to see if we can get it as close together as we can and yeah. still get them to function as they should. Talking about uh, adding realism to, to models, uh, obviously a, a big thing for 2022 in your range is the, uh, the addition of uh, steam effects and smoke effects with your uh, yes. new steam generators, as you're calling them. Uh, this is something that we saw featured on uh, the recent TV appearance, Hornby and Model World. Uh, could, you, could you elaborate a little bit on these units? Well, I, I, I can. I mean, some, some of um, the development is, we're still examining the possibility of putting, uh, of it being um, a patented. But basically, in, sim in simple terms, what, what you have um, uh, and what I've seen uh, with existing STEAM systems is um, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily get that sort of variety of, of STEAM. You don't, you, you, you'll have the wisp coming out of STEAM, but it isn't just that and the real thing. As you know, when a, you know, a loco moves off, and depending on how cold it is, you get this big push of, of steam coming out of the chimney. And what we've been able to do is to simulate that uh, and tie it in with um, a, a, a decoder, which allows us to vary the amount of, of steam that comes out to simulate whether it's starting off, whether it's coasting, where, you know, whether it's on full chat, et cetera, or whether it's just sitting in the station and you've just got that wisp of smoke coming up. So we're able to build that in and we're also able to alter, as I say, using CVs to alter how much does actually go through. Now, one of the classic comments is, you know, well, you know, how long will it last? Um, well, um, within reason, um, something like 30 to 45 minutes on a filling, right. which is, I think, pretty adequate. Um, mm. but, so yeah. Talk us through some of the research and development on a product like that. I mean, how long does it take roughly to get that to market? Is, is this something that came, came about an idea uh, like 12 months ago, or is this something that's been... No, it's an idea. That, I'll tell you now, it's an idea that came about about 10 years ago. Right. Uh, when, I, when I happened to see something like it in Nuremberg, in Germany, the toy fair there, uh, on, a, on a toy section. Uh, uh, and I just thought, uh, now how do they do that? Um, and um, I, I raised it here uh, and it, it, it was sort of looked at, but not pursued. Um, and then obviously, you know, you, you, I, I saw, I remember seeing it at, I think it was a Hartlepool show, um, some years ago, um, uh, somebody had fitted a, a smoke, uh, what I call smoke generator, whatever, uh, in a, yeah, I think it was a J94. It looked right. quite effective, but it wasn't pushing it out. Right. And that's what it was all about. And then we've all, we've probably all got, well, not all, but uh, my wife's got one of these amateur, uh, atomizers, which pumps out. Fragrances, all the rest of it, yeah, yeah. Fragrances and things like that, you know, what's that one? But, you know, I did look at it and I think, do you know what? It's about time we had a look. And of course, right. we've got uh, a new development team here. And it was, this is what I'd like. This is what we've, we've, we've seen. Right. Off you go. And within a very short while, working as a team, and it was a short while, and what you saw in the TV programme, um, was sort of the culmination of probably about three or four weeks' work. Uh, 
that's what we saw. Now, since then, obviously, it's been refined uh, to, to give us the, the more realism that you would expect from a steam loco. Uh -huh. There are more developments we can do on it, but initially, um, yeah, I think folks will be pretty impressed. Uh -huh. uh, and it, it, it's a shame that um, we won't um, be attending too many shows, obviously because of COVID and all the rest of it, certainly not the, the first half of this year, but hopefully things may settle down by in six months time. Uh, and we'd be able to start showing this off. But by then, hopefully it'll be in the market. Yeah. Well, for those interested and those watching, uh, if you want to take a look, there's a separate story on World of Railways with about this new unit, and you'll be able to watch a video of it in action uh, on there. Um, just out of interest, though, this is something that's obviously going to be offered as, as uh, a, a sort of a standalone a, a feature as part of uh, three flagship models. Is this something yeah. that might uh, launch as a standalone item to retrofit to models? Um, the answer to that is possibly yes. Um, it depends how straightforward it is to fit for someone who has a small amount of modelling right. skill. Yeah. Um, That's always the challenge. It is. Uh, and that was always one of the reasons why I was always a bit nervous about selling the TTS decoders as a separate item. Uh, and occasionally you, you will have people whose um, ability isn't perhaps as, as, as good as it can be and they don't necessarily have the correct tools. Uh, and it, it, it can certainly backfire on a company because uh. um, it's obviously, it is our fault. Um, that they didn't have the right tools to fit in. <laughs> um, so, um, and uh, what we have done in the past is actually fitted it for them, but it, it's uh, not something no. we want to do on a regular basis. Sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not, it's like a lot of things. It probably will become as a separate item, but at the moment we'll focus on including it in, as you say, the, the, the three locos we have planned. Uh, well, uh, 2022 sees a uh, further additions of your retro packaging uh, with the uh, Triang Railways remembered Victorian and uh, a crash train set. I mean, these are these are fantastic models of yesteryear that are being, uh, I guess, reborn. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about these because you've also added uh, a new A4 in the diecast double O range, and, uh, and we're going to see a Royal Scott train pack appear as well with the uh, the, the coronation. Well, that's that's quite right. I mean, it, it, first and foremost, uh, it's seventy years since um, Trying Railways was, was actually formed, so um, I think that was part of the the germ of the idea of of reintroducing, the, as I say, the the Trying Railways remembered. Um, but also, um, I can remember um, poring over Trying catalog. Um, looking at these wonderful images and because they weren't photographs in those days they you know they, these were graphics ah. these were and these emitted so much excitement and the yeah. titles and all the rest of it ah. and you, you you know it was one of those I, oh, I really really want Alice to pour over them because I couldn't afford it um but you know it, it was just wouldn't it be great yeah and I thought well do you know what I'm probably not alone and, I, and there are people who probably come back or come to the hobby as they've got older and they had a bit of spare cash and they've done that. But I just thought it would be, be great part of it to celebrate 70, 70 years of, of trying, but also to provide those, um, those sort of sets uh, of, of yesteryear that people say, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind one of those. And we've, I've tried to keep as close as I can to the original by using first radius curves, there were no transformers or controllers in the past those days because of uh. purchase tax reasons and things like that. And, um, uh, uh, and, and probably slightly where I can em embellish the, the, the livery a little bit, certainly um, on, the, um, on the Victorian, on, the, on those coaches. Uh, so it, it's really sort of reliving, you know, the days that um, were exciting days, really. They, they you know, those were... Great anticipation. You know, ah. It'd be lovely to have. Similarly, you know, 
you know, with, with, with the Hornby Double Oak, there's, there's, there's a terrific feeling of, of, of um, uh, pleasure, of, of, of nostalgia uh, with, with, the, with the Hornby Double Oak brand, you know. Uh, and funnily enough, I've just been reading an email from a chap um, talking about his Hornby Double Oak and, and, and how he had it when he was um, a young lad. Um, and it's it, again, it's sort of bringing those back in in into people's views, and and you know, it sort of creates that lovely, warm sort of fuzzy feelings of, of nostalgia. And, right. and nowadays, you know, I you know they can perhaps couldn't afford it uh, back in the in the fifties, but maybe now they can. And and I think that's that's part of it. I mean, Hornby Double O is is evolving into once more a brand on its own. Yeah. Uh, hence, you know, the the introduction of 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 the set, the Royal Scott set, uh, but also um, introducing the the A4 into the Hornby Double O solo range. Uh. Um, there are people out there who who just love the the heavy weight of the Hornby Double O loco. But also those who you know they they like to collect, and it, again you know they say nostalgia isn't what it used to be, but you know we're trying to make it so. Yeah. So you yeah. know they're, they're they're great great additions, and um, I can imagine the sort of certainly where the A fours are concerned, the queue starts on the left. Mm. For one thing well, there. it's uh, it's great to see that uh, that you're continuing the the retro packaging and, and obviously adding to that double O range, which I'm no doubt has has proved quite successful for you. Um, you know, playing on the on the nostalgia aspect. Um, something that might not have escaped um, certain uh, buyers is, however, the rising cost of manufacturing and uh, and the way that manufacturers are being squeezed in effect to, you know, try and maintain a, a fixed price point. Um, this is something that's obviously going to be challenging um, to yourselves, and uh, and so you've got this sort of more budget friendly range with the with the railroad plus there. Um, I guess to sort of help. Uh, newcomers to the hobby or people who are looking for something that isn't sort of top range. Um, it's quite a, quite a lot in this, in this range of, of uh, Railroad Plus for 2022. Um, just talk us a little bit through, through your thoughts on Railroad Plus and how that differs to standard railroad. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the, um, uh, if you like, the strengths of, of Hornby these days is that, you know, it, it, it is a broad church and that's probably we create a stick to beat ourselves with, but um, we try, you know, we go back to, as I say, the old trying sets, you know, we're, 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 we've recreated the Hornby Double O range and all the rest of it. You know, you're dealing there with people and, and collectors uh, and enthusiasts who, who love that sort of that, that nostalgia type feel. So you, you, have, an area, you have an area there. Um, where, um, one, of, one of the things that I, I felt like this for, for a good number of years is that it is great to have locos with all the bells and whistles and the detail and etc um but you not everybody can afford it because obviously detail adds cost um the the whole point of railroad was to not ignore those people who perhaps um live on a budget or have a budget or youngsters who have pocket money and so on, uh, or people who aren't quite so dexterous, uh, uh, and therefore, you know, if they have a, a, a local that's full of detail, they start knocking the bits off. Uh. So, you know, it, the the railroad range is there to to suit uh, a, a, a broad selection of enthusiasts. Um, now, originally, railroad was introduced, and we we were going to pair down on the livery. We don't, we don't pair down on the motors or the pickups, etc. They still have to run and they have to run slowly over points. Because there's nothing more frustrating than having a loco that's and then stops in the point and the hand of God has to push it. That's not what people want. People want it to run and run smoothly. Now, as I say, we used to pair down and, and do do pair down on livery. But the, the feeling and, and the strength and the reason why we started to introduce the Railroad Plus was the fact that 
the there was a a, a a movement out there they 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 actually wanted that extra detail on there that extra bit, bit of lining um uh, where nameplates concerned um uh, metal nameplates and so on so that's that was the thinking there so yes it's there it's a, it's, a, it's a budget range for people who are on a budget or or want to try their hand at modeling you know uh, they want to they want to spend several hundred pounds on a loco but quite happy to spend you know 80 90 whatever uh pounds on a loco and then said right okay well i can weather this uh, so it doesn't doesn't matter but you might have second thoughts if it's a 400 pound loco it's 300 pound loco trying to weather it and i think i'd be the same you know, i'd want to practice first but i mean i i think i think the rare i think it's terrific um it's had its own challenges uh you you're talking about the far east and and manufacturing etc and 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 covid has, has played havoc with, with production as as it, i'm sure it, it, we're not alone ah. um china doesn't mess about with covid if it, it shuts down, it, it will shut down. It will shut yeah. down for as long as they say. Yeah. And of course, that um, does play havoc with production. Uh -huh. And then you throw into the problems of what they call brownouts, where uh, there's not enough power, so they shut that down for several days. So it, it has proved a bit of a challenge this year. <laughs> Costs are going up. Shipping's gone up uh -huh. frightening. I mean, a container that was two and a half thousand pounds a year or so ago now is twelve and a half thousand pounds you know and the bigger the product that goes in that you, you don't get so much in there it all all adds to cost but raw materials have increased in costs shipping's increased ships are now traveling slower to save fuel but uh. it's still costing more so you know it, it it's everywhere you, you know it's household bills it's uh. you know there's the big government thing at the moment isn't it uh, with rising costs uh, so yeah. you can't the, the problem is you can't ignore it we can't ignore it we'd you know i hate hate honestly i hate increasing prices i don't want to increase prices but we need to because we need to stay in business uh, it really is as blunt as that in my brain yeah yeah well yeah, yeah it's uh it looks like a, a great range for 2022 um we'll look forward to seeing some more details of the models um on your website and uh, if you'd like to find the full specification of some of these models visit back on world of railways we'll post them as soon as we have them um simon thank you very much for your time today it's been a pleasure and uh, we'll catch up soon no doubt to see uh, to see how progress is on on some of these models and look you're more than welcome and um Anybody who's, who is watching this, if you have any ideas, if you think you're lacking this or you should have done that or why don't you do this, just drop me a line on, you know, simon.cola at hornby.com. I honestly welcome it. I, I do say I, I don't sit here for my own pleasure. You know, I don't I don't think, oh, why don't we do it? Well, perhaps I do say, why don't we do this? But, you know, the business... You know, this business is run by people who are interested in what you, the customer, the, the consumer, the enthusiast is asking for. So do let us know, all right? Yeah. There you it's, go. My, it's, it's my um, usual chant every year. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm serious. You have my email address. I'll always answer your email. There you go. You've heard it from the man himself. And uh, if you'd like to get involved with a conversation on what you think of Hornby's 2022 announcements, then visit the conversation on our forum, RM Web. Well, there you go. Until next time, Simon, take care. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing updates. Thank you, Howard. You no take problem. care of yourself. Bye-bye. Yeah.